In today's LEGO Star Wars review, we're going to be taking a look at a new set from the Ahsoka show, set number 75362, Ahsoka's T6 Jedi Shuttle. This set retails for $80 and includes 599 pieces. This set features four minifigures, Ahsoka Tano, Sabine Wren, Professor Hugh Yang, and Maroc. Starting with Ahsoka, she is featured here with her latest appearance from the Ahsoka show. Ahsoka features an updated Leku headpiece that matches closer to what we see in the show. I think this headpiece looks really good on this figure, and we finally get a little more accurate printing for her headband type accessory that sits at the base of her Leku. Ahsoka features two face prints. One is a calm expression, and the other is a more angry face. The face detail here is amazing in my opinion. Lego did a great job of capturing Ahsoka's face here. Ahsoka features her first ever arm printing from Lego, so that is a great inclusion. Ahsoka's torso and leg print are very well detailed and capture her in-universe appearance quite well, all the way down to her toed shoes she's wearing in the Ahsoka show, so that's great. The print detail on this new Ahsoka figure is really great. This is a very high quality figure. One thing I think Lego missed the boat on though, however, is her new lightsabers. The first thing they messed up on is the hilts. I think these hilts should have been what they previously given her, the Asajj Ventress hilts. Side note, I like the simplicity of all Jedi having the same hilts in Lego Star Wars, don't get me wrong. But they've already introduced a special hilt for Asajj Ventress, and they've used them for Ahsoka before. I just feel like that's what they should have done here as well. The second thing I think they did wrong with the lightsabers is the color of the blades themselves. In universe, Ahsoka's lightsabers are white. In this set, they are clear. I think what would have made these look really great would have been a frosted clear lightsaber piece. So it could have looked white while really being clear. I just don't understand the rationale around this choice. Personally, I'm glad they didn't just use white bar pieces. I think that the clear looks better than just plain white, but I still think they should have made a different choice here. Moving on to Sabine, this figure continues the trend of high levels of detail. We see Sabine's Mandalorian Lorian armor represented well here on her torso, front and back. Sabine's face print is nice. She is also featured with two facial expressions as well. She also features a new hairpiece as well as her helmet. Clearly, Lego isn't going to be as greedy this time around as they were in the past with Sabine. I think the helmet looks really great and represents her in-universe helmet well from what we've been able to see so far. Sabine is also featured with two blaster pistols as well as a green lightsaber. Moving on to Professor Hu Yang, I was pretty excited to get this figure when it was announced because I I loved his first appearance in the Clone Wars, and now with his awesome appearances in the Ahsoka show. However, now that I have him in hand, I have to say that I am less than impressed with this figure. Now, I don't hate it, I just don't really like the look of this figure. I think the scale in which Lego figures are, it makes it hard for a figure like Hu Yang to not look awkward. I feel like his head mold is pretty good, but it just feels off. The proportions of the head mold just feel off. To me, it seems like the head is too large and too round. It should have been a little slimmer and more flat in the front. But I think this is subjective. Each person is going to view this figure differently. Other than my personal issue with the head mold, this figure features a high level of detail across the torso and legs, with front and back print, as well as leg and toe printing. Now for the Inquisitor of this set, Maroc. This figure captures what we see in universe, I think, for the most part. I mean, if you want a medieval, rusted-looking castle guard with a lightsaber, this is the perfect figure for you. This figure features a high level of detail on the torso and legs, and features the typical Inquisitor armor. This figure does not have a dedicated headpiece, but instead uses an all-black Lego headpiece. So the identity of Maroc is really a mystery. I just know we're all so disappointed that we don't know who this random Inquisitor actually is. So overall, the minifig selection is great. All figures feature leg and toe printing, which seems to be more and more common for Lego now, which is great. Only Ahsoka has arm printing, which is interesting, but honestly, all of the figures are great in this set. Now, for the set, let's address the elephant in the room. This thing is tiny. Downsizing has really hit this set hard. As I said in my gunship review, downsizing can be good, but sometimes it hurts more than it helps. This ship is pretty large in universe. So this set being this downscaled is quite unfortunate. Now, I'm not advocating for this to be minifig scale or to be really large, but it just feels really small. Lego released a T6 Jedi shuttle in 2011, which was based off of the Clone Wars and featured four minifigures. The 2011 T6 shuttle was definitely larger than this one, but it could only fit two figures in the cockpit. So these sets are similar in that way. Figures can't be placed within the body of the ship, but in this set, you can only place one figure inside of the cockpit and very tightly at that. To me, the downscaling of the set is its greatest downfall. I wish it was a bit larger and would allow you to place the other two hero figures in the ship somehow, even if they had to lay down on each side of the ship. 
But one good thing about the interior of the ship is the fact that you can fit Ahsoka's lightsabers inside while she's in the cockpit. You can also place Sabine's blaster pistols and lightsaber inside while she sits outside of the ship. To me, that is a bit pointless. You can store Sabine's accessories, but she can't go in the ship. Totally makes sense. As far as the details of the ship itself, though, the ship looks great. The level of detail on the body of the ship in one side of the wing look amazing. Lego's deal for the past few years now appears to be settle for downsizing, get high levels of detail in return. Again, this is a very detailed build, except for the underside of the wing. Lego didn't even try to make the underside match the top dark red detail at all. Very disappointing for sure. The wings of the set feature a lot of great detail. There is unfortunately two large stickers on the wings that, if not placed carefully, can make the wings look a bit silly. I highly recommend waiting to put the stickers on until you finish building the wings. The instructions will tell you to put them on during the build process, but I recommend waiting so that you can line them up and get them as close as possible to the other red pieces on the wing. Another thing about this ship is it is incorrectly colored. It is clear Clearly red and white in the show in any reference material I've seen. I don't know why Lego went with light gray here. Now, it looks good, but it is inaccurate. The engines on the set look great, oddly enough. On the back of the ship, there is a small ball turret near the engines. Just to show you the scaling difference, a character is supposed to sit inside of that ball turret in the back. But on the set, it is scaled down to a 2x2 two two inverted curved tile piece. Again, I'm not advocating for a minifig scale T6 for a playset. I just found that funny. The rotating mechanism for this set is a major upgrade from the 2011 T6 Jedi Shuttle. It is so smooth and frictionless on this model. The 2011 model was not as smooth as this one is. It was a bit of a shaky mess when trying to rotate it quickly, so this is definitely a great improvement on LEGO's part. Lastly, the landing gear of this set is great as well. They fold away nicely when you don't need them, and fold out easily when you do need them. So overall, this set is a really nice set. I think the scaling could have been a bit better, but I think it is a great set. And it looks like a lot of people agree. This is the only set from the September Wave that is currently on back order on lego.com. For $80, I feel like this set is definitely expensive. But when looking at the previous versions of this set from 2011, adjusted for inflation, $80 is fair. But we did think the T6 shuttle from 2011 was overpriced, so do with that what you will. I'm eager to see how all of these dark red pieces hold up over time. As we know, dark red ages terribly due to LEGO's quality issues with these colored pieces. I would recommend this set for any Clone Wars fan, and especially for any Ahsoka fan. A good thing with this set being on the smaller side, it should be easy to display for most people, casual or hardcore LEGO collectors. Thank you for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please check out my other LEGO Star Wars and other LEGO product reviews on the end screen now. Thank you.